Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. In today's coverage of the ongoing civil war taking place inside of the former state of uh, Ethiopia, we at MFAN, Military and Foreign Affairs Network, uh, have received additional information about the state of the conflict just a few weeks ago. So, uh, as you recall, the uh, Tigrayan Defense Forces has seized control of Dese and Kambalcha, uh, and then joined up with forces of the Oromo Liberation Army at Kamise, uh, continued to head south, seizing the town of Ataye and uh, Shiarobit, and, and then eventually uh, advancing uh, on Debre Sena, uh, advancing past some of the key terrain pe- features uh, near Debrecena to the west of De- Debrecena, I talked about on previous episodes, and were then uh, threatening Debre Burhan. So, uh, during the course of that time, uh, during that period of time, as we 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 observed that rapid advance by the Tigrayan Defense Forces, uh, there was immense immense concern. Uh, obviously, in the capital, uh, Addis Ababa, also known as Finfine, uh, you, at the same time, you had the Oromo Liberation Army massing to the north, northeast, and west of the uh, capital. Uh, you had, at that time as well, uh, emergency outreach that started between uh, Abi Ahmed, uh, Turkey, the state of Turkey, uh, the People's Republic of China, and the United Arab Emirates. So again, uh, uh, these uh, these uh, extra state actors, uh, to include uh, Eritrea and uh, other other countries as well, who have significant significant resource uh, based interests in the former state of Ethiopia. And again, uh, given the situation on the ground, uh, it was very very well apparent that. If nothing was done to support the Abi Ahmed regime, the Abi loyalists, the Amhara regional militias, then uh, it was quite possible that uh, we could have seen the Tigrayan defense forces uh, on the outskirts and or marching into the capital Addis Ababa, also known as Fen Fene, uh, in a very, very short period of time. And again, there was... Uh, very uh, robust fighting occurring. There was there was uh, in, incredible advances being made by the TDF that had many nations that support Abiy Ahmed incredibly concerned. We were looking at uh, European states removing uh, embassy personnel. We were looking at the United States instructing all citizens to leave the country uh, as soon as possible. And, and again, the situation on the ground looked incredibly, incredibly precarious for the Abiy regime. And it was quite possible through intel chatter uh, that has been obtained that uh, in all likelihood the, the regime of Abiy Ahmed was very close to falling. Uh, there are reports that certain political le- leaders uh, close to Abiy Ahmed within the Prosperity Party uh, had already vacated friends and family. Uh, they were getting out of the country. Money had been transferred. Uh, a lot of things were in, in motion uh, for the collapse of the Abi Ahmed regime. Now, uh, once this uh, started to become reality, uh, that is when significant support started coming in for the Abi Ahmed regime in terms of direct military support. And what I mean by that uh, not only did Turkey uh, provide the the, uh, the notorious TB2 drone, uh, but actually provided uh, operators for those TB2 drones and became directly info- involved uh, in the ongoing fighting. We also received reports that, in fact, Turkish special operations forces uh, in, in the form of uh, ground control uh, forces that uh, that that basically uh, direct uh, airstrikes uh, can direct the TB2 uh, drone strike uh, while they're operating with ground forces. Again, the uh, the Ethiopian army uh, did not really have that capability. They do not have a direct ground support role 
Um, uh, they, they do not have the ability, like, say, the United States uh, Air Force uh, embeds uh, uh, Air Force combat controllers directly on the ground at times with uh, U.S. Army personnel or U.S. Marine personnel or uh, U.S. Marine or Army personnel uh, obtains the skill sets to become combat air controllers where they can call in those direct uh, ground support strikes. And uh, that is what uh, we understand was being uh, supplied by the Turks. Uh, these uh, combat aircraft controllers that could go on the ground and assist with uh, direct uh, ground support calling, calling in uh, uh, airstrikes via the TB2 drone. So again, uh, we've seen these drones uh, migrate from actual a a, uh, a a a strike capability to an actual direct ground support role by the forward uh, aircraft controllers uh, having conversations and direct communications with the TB2 drone operators. So again, that is what really changed the course of this conflict, among other assets that were also uh, deployed by the uh, the Turks as well. And again, that would be, uh, and not just Turkey, you're looking at the People's Republic of China and UAE, and especially the, uh, the Chinese providing uh, remote uh, sensing uh, data that uh, could help locate and identify uh, the, uh, the, the whereabouts of command and control centers used by the Tigrayan Defense Forces using signals intelligence and intercept technology. That was being utilized. So again, a, a lot of resources went in to preventing the collapse of the B. Ahmed regime. And in all likelihood, uh, we would be sitting in a, an entirely different place in this conflict uh, had had not those resources been supplied. Now, would that have uh, uh, ended the war? I, I saw a rather interesting comment that that uh, that uh, basically articulated such that it would it would not have uh, ended the conflict. And I would say that is that is probably correct. Uh, it would not have ended the conflict, but in all likelihood, uh, we would have have seen a Biamed flee either to the country or to a more secure location. Uh, in uh, the uh, former state of Ethiopia, or possibly even flee the country. And uh, sometimes that can lead to a domino effect where uh, we, would, we would just see the complete collapse of the Abiy Ahmed regime. Now, obviously, we would have continued to see uh, resistance coming from the Amhara region. Uh, as I talked about before, we, would have, we, we, we will continue to see uh, the Amhara region create its own army and become an, an Amhara-centric force. Uh, that is still continuing as we speak. But again, the, uh, the uh, savior of the Abiy Ahmed regime can be laid upon uh, 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 Turkey, the People's Republic of China, the United Arab Emirates. Again, these nations have uh, economic interest, economic agreements uh, with the Abiy regime. Uh, and uh, obviously, if Abiy Ahmed is no longer in power, those economic arrangements uh, can no longer be facilitated. And again, that is what uh, caused the immense inflow of, uh, of capabilities and, and, and more importantly, uh, those drones and other assets that were rapidly flown into the country, including the precision guided munitions such as the MAML that are now being currently util utilized. Now, uh, out outside of saving the regime, do the Turks have any interest in uh, uh, being part of this conflict in perpetuity? I would say probably not. And uh, it looks like right now we are going to go into a war of attrition phase, which uh, even then the Abiy Ahmed regime may not survive as his popularity continues to, to decrease and the economy continues to uh, constrict and collapse. Uh, but we'll have more information. I wanted to put that out there and, and uh, just uh, make it very, very apparent what saved the Abiy Ahmed regime in the last few weeks. Have a good day, everybody.